And I want to say, NVIDIA, what are you doing? The reviews and performance look really good for a $700 GPU. By the way, they have a Q&A talking about how bad the launch was, so I'll link it down below. Certainly, it was certainly more 3070 stock than there was of either the 3080 or 3090, while better, still not good, I'm told, basically. Better, but still atrocious <laughs> <laughs> in terms of supply. And it's all very unfortunate that NVIDIA decided to nuke its launch with this 8K marketing. NVIDIA, what the hell is this? What the hell is the point of having a set launch day that you build hype for for over a month and then you don't have anything for people. I really hate paper launches. Now I've given Nvidia the benefit of the doubt on this so far, but with today's move, it's clear that they are openly and unashamedly competing on an uneven playing field against their own partners. All right, so I'm gonna recap my experience buying an RTX 3070. Spoiler, I didn't actually buy an RTX 3070 because they were all out of stock within the first minute of them going live. Now I'm saying this is this is this is exploitation and it's wrong and it's it's really messed up. Why did you launch them if you didn't have the stock? Why did you rush to launch? Well, I know why. Because Big Navi is going to be big fucking disaster for Nvidia is what it's going to be. Hi there, Timmy Joe, your favorite yelling at nvidia spokesperson uh let's make videos about computers on the internet that stuff so we just watched a little montage there and i mean i had to keep that short to keep your interest but i could have went on forever i could have went down the line and found something bad said from every tech tuber on the planet uh you know about the nvidia launch so that's not what this is about today, but it's just a, I wanted to, you know, show you what's possible here in very recent memory, okay? And AMD, I'm gonna give you some credit for kind of making this botched NVIDIA job happen. I'm sure you have very awesome products, and for once, you've got the Leatherman, the leather jacket, spatula man, running scared, and they're making missteps, they're making mistakes. They're making mistakes that Intel, very res reminiscent of what Intel was making around the launch of uh, Ryzen. I, I hope that that's a really good sign. I, I really, really do. Because uh, when you have a Titan, they fall, you know, harder than anyone, okay? So, this is about AMD. They have some very important stuff happening. I'm missing out on it entirely. In just a few days, November 5th, will be the review or the launch date, it says availability, of uh, the Ryzen 5000 series. That's, that's crazy, Zen 3. And I'm not worried about Zen 3 at all. I am not. I believe this will go off very well. We see Intel actually trying to release 11th gen news right now, even though they're like, six months away from even pretending to ship those things. Uh, you know, so we know that Zen 3 is going to be a massive success and availability on launch day might be a little bit important, but not as important as uh, what, I'll, what the other thing I'm gonna talk about here because typically Ryzen does have a pretty good launch and uh, I'm, I'm wondering if AMD can pull this off. They've got a lot of chips to be making. How many PS5s and Xbox series whatever's uh, chips have you had to make in addition to all of these new uh, video card chips and CPU. It's, it's ridiculous. So this is a list of the five things AMD, Radeon Technologies Group, has to get right here, or it's gonna be a montage of exactly the same proportions that I'm putting together after November 18th. So November 5th for the launch date for Zen 3, 6800 XT and 6800 on the 18th of November, and then December 8th is when the 6900 XT is supposed to launch. So th this is very soon. This is very, 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 very soon. So. AMD, listen to me. Radeon, listen to me. <laughs> you better not be launching this unless you've got these five things right. Based on all that, you know, the montage I just showed you, the most important thing will be availability. If you have these cars set for a launch date on November 18th and you don't have all the bought 
you know, the, all the, th the websites programmed and your, uh, you know, distributors and your uh, retail channel set to avoid the huge bot influx that will happen. And, oh man, and you don't have the stock available. <laughs> it's gonna be a shit show. You're gonna ruin your credibility for a year. It's gonna be terrible. Make sure you get the availability right. It goes without saying, after what we just experienced, that if you launch on November 18th and you don't have cards available, it, you, you, it cannot be a success. Not in 2020, that's for sure. So I don't wanna to even talk too much about it because I don't wanna jinx it, but I sincerely hope you have card availability. Now, two, isn't as big a deal uh, with AMD because there are reference cards uh, and typically they're you know available through all retail channels. It's not like Nvidia where you have like you selling your cards on your website and then after that whole debacle you move it to Best Buy. You can you can only buy Founders Edition cards on BestBuy.com. What the hell is that? Uh, but so number two would be partner card availability. If you're gonna sell these GPUs, you better have some partner stock. And I believe your partners are a little bit more on board than the last couple GPU launches having to do with how good these things look and how your reputation with Ryzen has been very well. And they've been selling a crap ton of motherboards. And I'm sure they're just, just as happy to sell a crap ton of video cards for you. So make sure you got partner availability too. There was no mention of this whatsoever in uh, you know, all your slides and stuff in your presentation. So availability number one, partner availability number two, huge important. Without these things, the rest of what I'm gonna talk about doesn't matter. The third part, you've struggled with immensely in the past. You essentially make your users beta testers for your drivers on day one because you don't have the resources to properly sort out your drivers before launch dates. You guys basically dictated the time frame. You can tell Nvidia scrambled because they knew you had stuff coming out. I, it's not like you guys are scrambling to meet Nvidia's demand. I believe Nvidia scrambled to beat you to market, which is a huge advantage you have and you're going to ruin that advantage if the drivers are anything like Vega drivers at launch or you know even uh, the uh, whole, whole debacle with you had to use driver uninstaller and then install your graphic. You know, if there's a huge problem with drivers in the first couple of days, word will spread and it will ruin this launch for you. I implore you, do not release these cards unless you have pretty good drivers ironed out. And I'm hopeful because it's technically the second generation of this RDNA architecture. So I will, I will go, I won't say too much about this. It's been a huge problem in the past. It's gotta be sorted. Number four, hardware bugs. These are bugs like, uh, you know, you've had in the past with uh, Little Navi with the 5000 series, uh, a lot of resets, hardware resets, problems. Like I said, you had to make sure you had the right driver. Well, that was driver issues, but there were definitely some hardware issues as well. And we've seen this in the past. Sometimes it's fixed with a BIOS update. Heck, you even just had this issue where you had this power pro uh, target thing. And you had to, you loaded new BIOSes on the cards and then it turns out that they were too powerful for some cards and they were shutting cards off. So no hardware bugs at launch, i.e. like what just happened with Nvidia with the whole, well, that, that wasn't even really a problem, but the, you know, uh, little capacitors and stuff they were using on the back of the uh, cards, the power delivery system, apparently wasn't up to snuff for some of the uh, BIOSes and drivers they were shipping. So, you know, that's a hardware issue that became a huge debacle right at launch for Nvidia. Please try and avoid these, please. And then number five, of course, if we go through this, any of these things could be disastrous for your your launch here, okay? But uh, you would lose all credibility with number five. We saw you provided benchmarks and they looked very, very good. And I would say within reason, AMD's benchmarks are usually somewhat accurate. They do do things to kind of shove things in their favor, but why wouldn't you, right? Now, the big problem here is all those benchmarks were shown with smart access technology, which is a blend of Zen 3 and Big Nobby working together, okay? Problem being, 
you're gonna need both of these things to get those benchmarks that they were showing. They were saying up to a 13% or 16% with rage mode improvement, something along those lines. Rage mode being over auto overclocking on the graphics cards, but uh, that that's a big hit to performance if I'm Joe, you know, AMD user that doesn't feel like upgrading my 3900X or maybe my 2700X, but I do wanna go and get a 6800 because the price is pretty good. You know, uh, is, is the performance degradation gonna be that bad that you have to go out and buy one of your new CPUs to see the numbers you're portraying? There is a big asterisk on the, uh, you know, the, the uh, performance that we are gonna see from these graphics cards, assuming you're not opting into Zen 3. So, it's going to really, really tear the line here on whether or not you should buy one uh, or you know, uh, or maybe you need to upgrade your whole system to get this level of performance. That could be a terrible problem. As someone that hasn't heard anything from AMD about any launch samples or anything like that, as a consumer that will inevitably be wanting to buy a Zen 3 processor and a big Navi GPU, please don't pull an Nvidia. Please don't pull an Intel. Please don't pull an old AMD. Make this something new. Ryzen the hell out of NVIDIA, please, AMD. Don't screw this up. It was just a month ago I made a video on how this was going to be a big disappointment again. It's really seeming like it's not, but I could be making a very different video after November 18th. So I really, the ball is in your court, AMD. Please save us. Okay, please. Because right now things are so bad I just wanted to bring this up here at the end of the video. I saw, <laughs> I saw in my very hometown, actually a friend of me sent me this link. This is the state of, of, of computing right now. People with a 3900 and a B450 motherboard and a they just happen to get an RTX 3080 think they can get $8,000 for their, for their computer that in my opinion isn't worth any more than $2,500. Canadian. That's in my hometown. That's the state of computing around the world. You know, if it's reached my hometown. So that's, <laughs> this is the state of computing right now. $8,000 for a computer with a 3080 in it. AMD, would you please deliver us on high from these terrible plights? Would you please save us like you did in the CPU realm? Would you please make this graphics card launch acceptable? so I can get a damn good graphics card, so the people out there can get a good graphics card. And so inevitably, the prices of budget GPUs can trickle down a little bit. People are still selling 1060, three gigabytes in my area for 180, $200. R really bad ones too, it, it's, it's crazy. So I'm out watching Joe Instagram, Twitter. Thank you very much for watching this video. I just wanted to get it out there that it, there's a lot riding on this launch, but there's a lot of variables, five of them. Any one of them could nuke this launch. <laughs> could nuke it, as Steve from uh, Gamers Nexus said. Like, so please don't nuke your launch. Make it happen, Lisa Sue. I know you can. Have a good day.